Contra, a run-and-gun action series that defined the genre. The series has seen a number of ports and installments over the years, ranging from the NES all the way up through the Wii. Let's take a look. The first game in the series, Contra, on the NES, was developed and released by Konami in 1988. This is a run-and-gun action game with two-player simultaneous gameplay. Originally an arcade game released in 1987, the game was poured into the NES the following year. The story unfolds as an alien comet collides into Earth, setting a foothold in the Amazon with plans to take over the world. A Special Forces Elite Commando Squad, Scorpion and Mad Dog have been selected to quietly infiltrate the alien base and destroy Red Falcon. The stages take you through the jungle, enemy base, waterfall, snowfield, energy zone, hangar zone, and the alien's lair. The stage layouts play as side-scrolling platform segments and a pseudo-3D view in the enemy base where you proceed toward a background while shooting enemies. Basic controls include running, jumping, ducking, and dropping down from platforms. You can aim and shoot in eight directions, having unlimited ammo and equipped with a default rifle. A variety of gun upgrades can be obtained by destroying flying item capsules. These include a semi-automatic machine gun, a laser that shoots a powerful beam, a fireball gun that shoots in a corkscrew pattern, and a spread shot that sprays bullets in five directions. The machine gun allows you to constantly fire by holding the attack button but the spread gun is my favorite choice with its wide attack range. Auxiliary power-ups include a rapid fire upgrade, a barrier that grants temporary invincibility, and an item that clears the screen of all enemies. Contra is one of the first titles to utilize the classic Konami code. When entered at the start screen, you begin the game with 30 lives instead of the standard 3. Although this game is a little short, it has responsive controls and one of the best soundtracks on the NES. The game is a true classic and set the foundation for many great games to follow. In 1990, Konami developed and released Super C for the Nintendo Entertainment System. A sequel to the original NES title, this is another two-player run-and-gun action game. A port of the 1988 arcade hit, this is the last Contra game to be released for the arcades. A year after the battle with the Red Falcon organization, Mad Dog and Scorpion are sent on another mission. This time, the alien forces have taken over an allied military base possessing most of its troops. Not only must you fight against your former comrade in arms, but also a new mutated form of the same alien creatures fought during the previous mission. The gameplay draws heavily from the previous game with similar controls and upgrades. Familiar weapons include the spread gun, machine gun, and laser. The fire gun now shoots a large projectile that spreads when it hits an enemy. It can also be charged by holding the attack button for a more powerful shot. The pseudo 3D levels from the first game are gone, but replaced by two levels with an overhead perspective. Here you move vertically through levels while defeating enemies and avoiding attacks. The levels take you from the gates of Fort Firestorm, into the enemy command center, through the jungle, into the mountains, and finally to Red Falcon's base. Instead of the classic Konami code used in the previous game, a different cheat code is available, this time starting you with 10 lives. This game feels more challenging than the original, but still offers responsive controls and a fun gameplay experience. Super C is a solid follow-up on the NES.
Operation C was developed in 1991 by Konami and released on the Game Boy under Ultra Games. This is the first portable installment in the series and one of the only Contra games to be exclusively single player. This time, Scorpion sets off alone on a mission to destroy Black Viper and neutralize an enemy force that is storing an alien cell in their base. The game draws inspiration from previous NES titles featuring similar graphics and gameplay. Most of the soundtrack is taken directly from the first Contra game, and the stages share design similarities to Super C. There are a total of five unique stages that play out through the Island Base, Mutant Mountains, and Black Viper's Lab. Similar to Super C, there are two overhead stages, along with the typical side-scrolling platform levels. The game controls are mostly the same, but you can no longer drop to a lower platform while ducking. While many familiar gun power-ups appear through the game, this is the first game to have a default auto-fire feature. All guns will fire continuously by simply holding the attack button. This eliminates the need for the machine gun, and a few other power-ups have been removed including the laser, barrier, and bombs. The spread gun returns, initially firing three shots at a time. When a second spread power-up is obtained, the gun is upgraded to firing five shots with each round. A new homing gun is introduced, firing bullets that chase after enemies. This is extremely useful and may just replace the spread gun as my favorite weapon. While it's a little short, the game is a ton of fun and a must-own title on the Game Boy. Contra 3 The Alien Wars was developed by Konami and Factor 5 and released on the Super Nintendo in 1992. This is the third console iteration in the Contra franchise, overhauling the run and gun action series with improved graphics and gameplay. Set in the distant future, the alien invaders that were defeated in the previous games have decided to launch a full-scale alien war against mankind on Earth. Jimbo and Sully, descendants of our previous heroes, must take the aliens head-on to destroy the imminent threat. The level designs in this game are more complex with the ability to grab onto poles or ceilings, climb walls and ladders, destroy buildings and scenery, and commandeer tanks. New level styles in the Alien Wars involve motorcycle chases, riding on missiles, and two Mode 7 enabled top view levels. The controls in the top view stages differ from those in Super Contra and Operation C. The character always faces the same direction when moved with a control pad and must be rotated with the shoulder buttons to turn. The objective in these stages is also different from the standard side view stages. To advance through the level you must first destroy a series of targets situated at fixed locations before being transported to a new area to face the boss. The weapon system is revamped, allowing you to carry two weapons instead of one and only losing the one you're currently using if you die. You can fire both of these weapons simultaneously in a circular fire pattern that hits enemies on all sides. Similar to Operation C, your default gun now has auto-fire capability. The homing gun makes a return, as well as the spread gun, flamethrower, laser, barrier, and bombs. Bombs are now stored upon pickup and can be detonated at your discretion. A new weapon introduced is the cannon gun, which fires short-range, self-destructing shells that deal heavy damage. With the visual improvements and depth of gameplay, this game is an excellent advancement in the series. Contra Force on the NES was developed by Konami and released in 1992. This is a two-player action shooting game and somewhat of a spin-off to the main Contra series. This is the third game to be released on the NES, but the plot and settings are unrelated to the previous entries. The story takes place in 1992, where a task force composed of former military professionals is formed to protect Neo City from terrorism. When the head of intelligence is threatened by a criminal organization, it's up to the Contra Force to take action and save Neo City. Contra Force does have some tie-ins to other games in the series, as Neo City is featured as a playable stage in both Alien Wars and Contra 4. Unlike previous titles, Contra Force begins with the option to choose between one of four characters. 
In addition to Burns, the team's leader, you can also choose between Iron, a heavy weapons expert, Smith, a sharpshooter, and Beans, a demolitions expert. Each character plays differently, wielding unique weapons and having distinct movement speed and jumping abilities. The objectives are similar to previous counter titles, fighting enemies across a stage and defeating a boss at the end. There are a total of five stages, which alternate between side view platforming and overhead perspective levels. At the side scrolling stages, you can now walk both left and right, and in the top view stages can move freely in eight directions. Instead of the instant power-ups from previous Contra games, you gather power-ups hidden within the destroyable environment of each stage. The available items include a standard issue pistol for every character, two character-specific weapons, a turbo fire power-up that increases the number of bullets on screen, and a rolling attack that keeps the character invulnerable to enemy fire while mid-air. Through the pause menu, you're able to switch your current character, assign another character to a second player, or call forth a computer-controlled partner. The computer character can be assigned to one of six possible strategies and will appear for five seconds to assist you before disappearing. I have fond memories of renting and playing this game when I was younger, but the game unfortunately has not aged well. It suffers from painful slowdown and screen flicker, which really hinders the gameplay. The game does offer innovative strategy and gameplay, however, and provides a change of pace to the main Contra series. A port to the Super Nintendo game, Factor 5 developed Contra The Alien Wars for the Game Boy in 1994. Due to the significant hardware differences between the Super Nintendo and Game Boy, several changes have been made to the gameplay. In this version, the level structure has been altered with many of the enemy bosses being removed. Stage 4 of the original game, with the motorcycle chase and air battle, has been removed entirely. The overhead levels are still present, but with slightly different controls. A strafing ability has been included to compensate for the absence of rotation in these top view stages. The player no longer has the ability to hold two weapons, but can still carry and use bombs with the select button. All of the weapons from the original Super Nintendo version are featured, except for the laser gun. Another difference is that there's only a single player option instead of the standard two player mode from the original version. You can again change the difficulty in the options menu, and this time a sound test is available. One new feature is the addition of a password system to allow you to return to a previously started game. Some neat features are available through use of the Super Game Boy. When linked, enhanced sound effects are offered and are pretty impressive for the Game Boy. The background music you're hearing is coming directly from this setup. A custom color scheme is also available with a wide variety of color patterns and borders. My favorite is definitely the kittens. The Super Nintendo version is definitely the superior choice of the two, but this game is a nice addition for a portable option. In 1994, Konami developed Contra Hardcore for the Sega Genesis. This is the first game in the Contra series released for a Sega platform and departs from the preceding games in several ways. Set five years after the events of Contra 3, a terrorist group has stolen an alien cell recovered from the war and now intends to use it to produce weapons. With the rapid spread of crime and illegal activities following the war, the Hardcore are deployed to handle the situation. This is a two-player game like most in the series, but this time you have four characters of the Hardcore to choose from. You can play as a standard male or female soldier, as well as a cybernetic wolf that is equipped with a Gatling gun. A small robot named Brownie is also playable, and has the unique ability to hover in the air by pressing the jump button a second time. The game controls are otherwise very similar to those in Contra 3, and makes use of Sega's six-button controller. A new ability added to the game is a sliding technique performed by holding the direction pad diagonally downward while pressing the jump button. Your character is invulnerable while sliding and can even harm certain enemies. Your character is equipped with a default machine gun and carries a supply of bombs. You are able to carry up to four different weapons which will vary depending on the character you choose. Where previous games offered overhead stages, this game sticks to the standard side-scrolling platform levels. 
Another new feature to this game is the addition of branching paths that allow you to play through different set of stages depending on the decisions you make during the story. There are also multiple endings available based on your choices, adding a lot of replay value to the game. With the unique changes in gameplay and the variety of characters and levels, this is a great installment in the series. Contra Advance The Alien Wars X was released by Konami in 2002 for the Game Boy Advance. While this game draws heavily from the Super Nintendo version, several changes have been made from the original game. Many of the same stages return from the destroyed city, to the industrial area, to the alien's base. The two top view stages from the original game, however, have been removed. These stages have been replaced by two stages from Contra Hardcore, the military train, and the big battle. The control scheme is maintained with the ability to climb walls, scale across poles, and shoot in multiple directions. A new feature drawn from Contra Shattered Soldier allows you to lock your aim and move while shooting in one direction. Many of the same power-ups are available, with the exception of the Mega Bombs. Where you could wield two weapons in the original game, you can now only hold one gun at a time. When you pick up a new power-up, you now have the option to revert to the previous selection if you choose. In addition to the single-player portability on the Game Boy Advance, a two-player mode is available through use of the Game Boy Advance Link Cable. Maintaining the graphics of the original game and adding stages and gameplay from other Contra iterations, this is a neat installment in the series. Developed by WayForward Technologies, Contra 4 was released for the DS in 2007. This is a sequel to the NES and Super Nintendo installments and has a gameplay model similar to those games. The plot is set in 2638, two years after the events of Contra 3 The Alien Wars and three years before the events of Contra Hardcore. With Red Falcon defeated and the Alien Wars finished, the planet is finally at peace. Black Viper, another alien entity that was featured in Operation C, is launching attacks on Earth. A specialized group of Contra Commandos is formed to take on a final strike mission to destroy Black Viper and its army of aliens, robots, and mutants. The game features nine stages that vary between the standard 2D platforming and pseudo 3D tunnel stages drawing resemblance from the original Contra. The playfield utilizes both screens of the DS, and you can move between the screens using a grappling hook. Similar to the NES Contra games, your standard weapon is a single fire rifle and can be upgraded by collecting power-up icons. Drawing from Contra 3, you again have the ability to hold two weapons simultaneously. By picking up the same power-up twice, an upgraded version of the same weapon is available, similar to the spread gun power-up from Operation C. The standard arcade mode allows varying difficulty levels, and a multiplayer mode is available through local wireless. Several bonus features are available, including a museum where you can view artwork, and a challenge mode offering additional content. Adapting many great features from previous entries, this game takes the series back to its classic roots and is a great entry in the series. An exclusive game to Nintendo's WiiWare system, Contra Rebirth was developed by M2 in 2009. This game returns to the classic roots of the series, retaining the sprite-based side-scrolling gameplay the series is known for. The plot takes place in 2633, where the Neo Salamander Force travel back to 1973 to take out the Contra Force while the Earth's defenses are still primitive. They set up a base in the Yucatan Peninsula in Central America, and the Contra team are deployed to travel back in time to stop them. Our classic hero Bill Riser is joined by Jendi Yagyu from Neo Contra, and Pliskin, a tall lizard-like humanoid alien. A fourth playable character is an android named Brownie, a throwback to the team from Contra Hardcore. Like most Contra games, up to two players can play simultaneously, and you can choose to play with the Wii Remote, 
classic controller, GameCube controller, or my favorite, a Super Nintendo controller through a GameCube adapter. The dual weapon system from Contra 3 returns, and the default gun can once again shoot an auto-fire. The power-ups in this installment consist of a spread shot, a laser gun, and a homing gun. The traditional flamethrower, however, is missing. Like some of the newer installments in this series, you can change between a variety of difficulty levels. Playing on the easy difficulty level will allow you to always keep your current weapon even after losing a life, however the final boss stage cannot be accessed when playing on this mode. The game consists of five stages, packed with classic Contra action and an outstanding soundtrack. This game is a gem on the WiiWare system and definitely worth checking out. A few other Contra games have been released over the years on a variety of PlayStation systems, but I don't own any of these as I'm mostly a Nintendo collector. I also hear that they're not very good, but worth mentioning just so that you're aware that they're out there. We covered a lot of games in this video, and most of them are very good. I do have a couple of favorites, however, so here are my power picks. Something on the retro end of the spectrum, Contra 3 Alien Wars is an amazing game with great graphics and just the right difficulty level. It's one of my favorite titles on the Super Nintendo and comes highly recommended. Something a little more modern, Contra Rebirth is very fun, bringing back all the great features of Contra 3 but in a brand new game. If you have access to the Wii's Virtual Console, it's pretty affordable and definitely worth a look. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm always interested in what some of your favorites are, so let me know in the comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.